Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clemenson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own, just lacking general guidance or advice, you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the motivation, the mentorship, and the strategies you need to become the very best Lone Recruiters. To join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now, today is Monday, but not only is it Monday, we get into the back end of the year, okay? So this episode... We're going to do a quick motivational, I'm going to kick your butt so that you don't peter out until Christmas and just start to, to wind down because you think the the year's ending, nah, 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 nah. and then we're going to get into how we're going to shape your desk for this week, what do you need to get done, things like that. So let's get stuck into it. Little side note, I just recorded this episode and forgot to press record on the video, so this is actually take two. It's the first time I've done a second take. I'm usually a one-take person. Um... Not that you would have ever known that, but I had to share it with someone. Okay, I, if you follow me on LinkedIn or if you follow my socials, every now and then I like to go onto a website and there's, a, I can't remember what it's called, but you can pop in like what the percentage of the year has passed, right? And I actually went on yesterday to have a look. I'm like, what is the percentage that we're through? Because September, we're getting that feeling that, ooh, the sun's coming out, spring's coming, kind of feeling like the end of the year is approaching. You're starting to think about Christmas. You're starting to think about, you know, uh, the wind down. But it's a real trap, right? And because uh, there's still so much more of the year to go. I actually checked yesterday and I, I I laughed, but I was also like, damn it, why is it that? It was 69% done, okay? And I didn't want to post it yesterday. So I actually posted it and said it's 70% done because I just, you know, there are some people in my network who may not uh, look favorably across a 69% on their LinkedIn feed. You know the type. Um, what is the point of this, right? So there's 30% of the year remaining. That's just under a third. That's a lot, right? And what it provocated in my mind was we've all heard of Pareto's rule, the 80-20 rule, right? Which is 20% of what you do will result in 80% of your outcomes. And I think for recruitment, that's one of the most applicable things you can possibly do because we all know that a lot of what we touch just turns to dust. A lot of the activities we do results in nothing. And it's the 20% gold that results in 80% of the billings that we make, right? So that in mind, yes, it might st- be the sun might be coming out. Yes, spring's coming. Yes, it's starting to feel like maybe the year's starting to wind down. But there's still 30% of the year to go. And if 20% of what we do results in 80% of our outcomes, that should give us hope that there's still time within this year to make this a cracking year. Even if you've done nothing this year, even if you're looking back and going, I fucked it. This is a shit year. I don't know what happened. I'm just really hating my desk, myself. I haven't done a great job. Guess what? There's still bloody time. Okay, and, and on the flip side, if you've had a cracking year, don't give up. There's still 30% to go. Let's make it an absolute breakout, phenomenal, like next level year. Let's make it so scary come January that you go, how on earth do I beat last year? Let's do it. Because seeing is believing, right? So there's two things I want for you today. You've either had a cracking year, I want you to finish this year strong. Let's not give up. There's 30% to go. Let's just put our head down. Let's kick some ass and let's just make next year's mountain even bigger. That's amazing because once you've seen that you've gone and stretched yourself to another level, your brain goes, oh, I've done that before. Therefore, I can do it again. You'll only you only make more money next year. And as I said before, if you've had a rubbish year, you've, you have not done what you wanted to do. Maybe the market got a bit wobbly. Maybe you went a bit sleepy, sleepy. Whatever that might be, now's the time to think, crap, I need money for Christmas. You knew you need money for Christmas. You want to buy your mum that nice thing. You want to buy your partner that nice thing. You want to buy your kids those nice things. You need money for that. Okay, you still got 30% of the year to go. So even if you've had a rubbish year, based on Pareto's logic, who only says 20% of your year can make up 80% of your year's uh, billings. That's how I'm going to perceive it for you today. Um, you still have time. So let's go. Let's kick some ass and let's just pick ourselves up And let's just make September, October, November, December the best buddy months that you've ever had in recruitment. Now, motivation's out of the way. 
let's get to let's get to the nuts and bolts of today and this week and let's just start to plan out what you need to get done this week to have a really great end of week. So one, get a pen and paper. Let's go. What are the deals in pending? What are the deals at the end of your pipeline? They've either got a contract out, you need the signature. Have you got any deals that um, you're just waiting for an offer? They're, they're the ones that are impending, right? So do you need to go and pre-close any candidates? Do you need to go and touch base with any clients to see where that offer is? Do you need to do a status check with your candidates um, and do, do another close? Do you need to go back and have a conversation about money? Uh, is there anything preventing you accepting an offer if we get this? What are your reservations about this job? Uh, we're in that we're in that decision making mode now. I'd need to know every single last bit of detail so that we we can get to the end without a hiccup. Pending. So what's in pending? What's waiting for an offer? What needs a signature? That should be your first priority this morning. Now, next level, second interviews. Do you have any candidates that are waiting for a second interview to lock in? Have you got any candidates who are booked in for second interviews that might need a prep call? So give them a call and go, cool. You're meeting with XYZ. They want to talk to you about this. This is what you should be preparing with. You need to go and look at this person's profile. You need to go and sharpen your skills on these, you know, your your, your knowledge on these elements of whatever the job is. Prep calls. Who? What candidates are in second interview that need to prep? And um, the other side of that is what candidates are waiting for a second interview? So do you have to go to a client and say, cool, you've had that first meeting. You said you wanted a second. Where are we at? Where's your calendar? Let's book it in. And when your client says, yep, yep, Cool, yep, no, we can do that. We'll book it in for next Friday. Say, great, um, but we're not doing next Friday. We need to do Wednesday this week. Why Wednesday this week? We're so busy. Just go, why Friday next week? Why two weeks away? That's too far away. So much happens in 24 hours in recruitment, let alone two weeks, right? And most markets are still quite competitive. If you're in Australia, still such a talent shortage. So, you know, your clients are just waste potentially just wasting their time by putting that meeting so far out. Educate them and just say to them, surely you can get your calendars to align for today or tomorrow. Let's do it. There's no time like the present. Let's go. Strike while the iron's hot. So let's go and book those second meetings, right? You, know, you have to look at your clients, so you have to look at the candidates. So, but let's tighten them up. First meeting, similar sort of approach. Have you sent any CVs out uh, last week that you are waiting for feedback on to, to book an interview? Should you be calling any clients about any candidates that you believe should be on interview? Have you submitted a short list to a client? Which ones do they want to see? Have you got a candidate that you've canvassed out to the market? Do you need to go and follow up and go, you know what? This is what you've been asking for. Let's go and book that in. What first interviews do you need to book in, right? So we like the triangle logic. Like your pendings are up the top. You probably have one or two up there. Your second interview is probably at two or three here. Your first interview should be, there'll be more of those. Like you should have four or five people on first interview. Like that's a nice healthy triangle. And underneath that's just jobs and random candidates that, that aren't processed. You haven't properly packaged them up or you haven't quite got the brief and it's down here, right? And it's all, all headed up to the top, which is like making deals. So it's a different sort of pipeline, but it's more of like a triangle. Um, okay, so pending, seconds, and first. We've gone through those. Now I want to look at your desk, right? Um, recruitment is, there's a lot of luck. Uh, obviously, the better you get, the luckier you get. But there's also activities you can control, irrespective of candidates and clients. What you do day in, day out, what activities you can control is, is, is a great one to anchor your, your week in. So what I mean by that is, do you need to go on a headhunting campaign? Do you need to go and do a project for a specific role? Do you need to go and do an advertising campaign for, for a specific role? You know, these are activities that you can do that, that, that the outcome doesn't matter. You've just got to do it. The outcomes will come, but these are activities that you can control. So what's the KPI that's going to matter for you this week? Have you got a job? Have you got jobs sorted? You've got clients. You know where your work is and what are we generating? So if you've got clients and you've got jobs – well, let's just rank them. This is the first one I'm going to tackle. This is the second one I'm going to tackle. This is the third one I'm going to tackle. What ads do you have to write? What projects do you have to do in LinkedIn? What uh, calls do you have to make to candidates that are in your database or low-hanging candidates that you know are active to, to apply to those roles? What is it? What is the, the activity that makes the most difference to your desk this week? Or what is the KPI that matters most? Is it getting interviews? Is it just getting through a 
a sheer volume of projects so that next week's a busy week. What is it? You answer this question. What is it that makes a difference to your life and your week this week? Right, and that's what we want to focus on now. So you've got your triangle, you've got your deals impending. We tighten those things up first. We book the interviews, cool. But then we move on. We've got to start paving for next week, right? And um, as I said to you at the beginning of this episode, there is still 30% of the year to go. So let's kick ass. And you know what? If you've had a bad year or a good year, this week's a new week. Even if you've had a cracking year and you start having some bad weeks um, next to each other, I tell you, you're going to feel shit. You will start to feel really rubbish about what you do because you're not performing at your best. You can have a rest at Chrissy or go and book a holiday and have a very conscious rest, but don't rest at your desk. I hate that. If you're going to rest, go to the beach. If you're going to rest, go and have a massage. Don't do it at your desk. Don't be lazy at your desk. If you're at your desk, we're doing work. We're going to get it done. We're going to kick ass. Do you know, I actually said this, I probably recruit... 20% of my time. The rest is business, podcast, mentoring, leadership. It's like, it's insane how little time I actually have at my desk. But when I'm at my desk, it is bang on, focused, quality in, quality out work. So if you find yourself faffing, pushing paper, not really getting anything done, do yourself a favor, stand up and leave the office and just make a note of it. I'm out. I'm having a terrible day. It's the best thing you can do. I can almost guarantee your manager will appreciate you saying that. Manager, I'm not feeling it today. I'll be back tomorrow and I'll double down. That's it, right? But call a spade a spade. If we're going to work this week, we're going to have a cracking week, we're going to have a cracking week. So it starts today. We're going to have a good week. We're going to have a good half week. We're going to have a good half week. We're going to have a good day today. If we're going to have a good day today. We're going to have a good morning. Check your pending. Check your second interviews. Check your first interviews. Now, what are we generating? Do we need jobs? We need candidates. That's recruitment 101. Do we have jobs? Yes. Then we need candidates. Do you have candidates but no jobs? Cool. We're going to canvas our candidates. That's it. That's all you're doing today. Go and kick ass. I hope this puts a spring in your step. 80 20, baby. 20% of what you do results in 80% of your outcomes. It's 30% of the year to go, good or bad. Go. That's all we have time for you today. Hope you got something out of it. As always, have an amazing day. May all your deals come true.